So in amplitude modulation, the sound wave is applied to the amplitude of the radio wave. We can see the bottom half of this diagram is a carrier wave, that's the boring old normal wave, that's been modified by this top wave. We can see that the amplitude of the carrier wave is varying like this, in exactly the same way that this top wave is shaped. The resultant wave will have the same frequency as the carrier, because if we look at the frequency of this bottom wave, we can see that the pulses are still coming very, very often, just as often as the carrier wave. So that means that the frequency of this wave doesn't change. So if we know the exact frequency of the carrier wave, then we'll be able to pick up this wave here. Then if we have a receiver, we can subtract the carrier wave because we know exactly what the carrier wave is going to look like. And so if we receive this, then the radio can tell us, oh, well, the wave that we encoded was this top one. And of course, that top one doesn't need to be just a plain old boring sine wave. It can be any wave you choose. It can be a sound wave, or if you're feeling adventurous, a water wave, although I'm not sure how that would sound on a radio. Now, amplitude modulation is susceptible to interference. It's one of the disadvantages that it has compared to FM radio. Now, a lightning flash or a spark uh, will in fact cause its own electromagnetic waves, including radio waves, and these will interfere with AM radio because the amplitude of the wave will increase at the point where the spark is. Now, when that radio wave reaches a receiver, the receiver will just assume that all the changes in amplitude were sent out with the signal that sent, uh, with the uh, source that sent the signal, rather. So it assumes that any change in amplitude is part of the encoded sound. So if we have a change in amplitude that's not due to the encoded sound, it'll make the sound really weird when we decode it. We might get little bits of static or things like that when we receive the message. The other thing is that if the carrier wave is very faint, then the amplitude will not be very large. But once again, our receiver won't be able to tell that's because the distance comes, the wave comes from so far away. It'll just assume that it's faint because it was encoded faint. The sound will get much softer than if you had a strong signal. This means that if you have only a very weak AM radio wave, it will sound very quiet. Is this wave a result of FM or AM encoding? So to find out, we need to figure out what changes. Does the frequency change? No. The carrier wave, that is the wave with a very, very small wavelength, is always the same distance apart. Does the amplitude change? Yes. There's a big variation in amplitude all over. So it is amplitude modulation. The frequency does not change, the amplitude does. That means that the sound wave, or in this case the sine wave encoded, changes the amplitude. So sketch the decoded wave. Well, we know that when the amplitude is very small, the wave will be at a trough. When the amplitude is very large, the wave will be at a crest. So a wave should look something like this. Just trace out the amplitude of the wave. If you want it a bit neater, it might look something like this. We can see that it's always going to line up with the original wave. The way that radios managed to make this decoding used to be with a rectifier, which is a small piece of germanium. These days we use semiconductors and transistors to do the same job.